Hello, hello, hello! Yoyo from Slack out here again! I hope you guys had a great week and here we are with another video. This video was made by Artem, aka a moaner, and it discusses the principles of white space utilization in PowerPoint. We like to be very transparent with our viewers, so full disclosure, this video is long and very theory based. It consists of two parts, a lecture segment where Amona will go over the principles of white space utilization and a practical segment where he will use those principles covered on a cluttered slide in order for you to gain a better idea. Now, I know white space utilization isn't exactly a sexy topic, but it is extremely important for people to get right. A lot of the time people rely too much on templates or other people's guidance to get stuff clean. We don't want you to be one of those people. We want people to come to you and ask for your help. You guys are the pros and you guys are the artists. We know this video is a bit different than other videos, but we want to do what you think is helpful for you. Feedback is important here, so we just want to make absolutely clear we read every single comment on Reddit or YouTube or whatever in order for us to get better. This is perhaps what makes us so different from other PowerPoint guide YouTube channels. We listen, we adapt, and that is because we want to be your go-to channel. That is our goal. And in order to, for us to do that, we don't want you to just listen to us. We want to listen to you. For your convenience, I've added some tags in the video for you to click on in order to make this easy. Please enjoy the video and have a great day, boys and girls. Hi everyone, I'm Honor here from SlideCow. Um, I don't know if about you, but sometimes you get these PowerPoint slides from analysts or interns that don't really look professional and you need a quick fix uh, to change them or you need a quick educational material for your uh, analyst to absorb and then go and make changes to the slides. So today, this is exactly what we're going to try to do. We're going to try to go back to the basics, uh, basics of design um, known as white space and help people understand how to use it properly when designing slides. Um, so we are starting back with basics. And as you can see, whenever I click, um, it shows exactly what's happening on my laptop. And then also when I'm pressing any keys, so if I'm doing and holding control and dragging, you see exactly what's happening on my keyboard. And I would like to apologize for any clicking or keyboard noises and we will try to reduce it in post-production. But for now, I would like to apologize for it. So go into white space. Um, white space by itself is a very easy concept. And whenever you start working on any slide, um, what you want to make sure is you start with guidelines. Um, guidelines uh, can be added by going to grade and guides um, and then adding one vertical and one horizontal. Um, and then you can control and drag and that way you can quickly make sure that you have a frame around your slide. Once you have the frame, um, it becomes your uh, guiding point of um, where to align elements. As you can see, this central element is aligned with both central ones um, and the arrows are also aligned appropriately. So once you have the guidelines, you kind of lock yourself in into a very cozy room on your slide and you can proceed further. Um, most of us have headers and footers as part of our templates for our companies. You don't have to follow them. Um, and if you do, then at least you have the middle area um, to work with. A lot of times when you create a new slide, the first thing you do is control A and delete everything. And if you have a header and a footer, great. If not, then you can continue working. Um, so a little bit more about white space. Um, by itself, the white space comes from uh, graphic design and the idea is that everything that you have on your slide on your canvas on your website is all uh, extremely important so it's important real estate and you better know how to use it um, it doesn't have to be white it can be any color it can be any pattern and the concept by itself is very simple but can be difficult to work with and from perspective of why should you care about it well first of all uh, you can use white space to bring attention to exactly what matters on this on your slide would that be different elements that you're listing would that be a graph that you're portraying um, you got to make sure that it's easy for people to zoom in on information that you want them to read and make sure that it, it is legible you want to make sure that they can read it 
and they don't have to work to read it. Um, it's also important from an aesthetic perspective. Professional slides often have a balance and order. You want to make sure things are symmetrical. You want to make sure that things are aligned. You want to make sure that things that are of equal weight are of equal size on the screen, and things that are of less importance are smaller. Things that are closer to each other um, in concept are also closer to each other physically on the slide, and things that are further apart are further apart on the slide. And at the end, um, this comes back to professionalism and kind of simplicity and luxury. Um, if you want to think about two different brands, one Apple and one um, Amazon, Apple products are usually very simplistic, but also kind of elegant and more luxurious. Um, and I'm not going to argue that they're not functional, but when you look at Amazon website, it's a little bit more cluttered, but even though it's cluttered, the way that they use their white space, it's still functional, it's still usable, it's still um, very um, it is designed with a very exact purpose. But coming back to uh, PowerPoint designs and PowerPoint slides, um, there are two different types of white space that we're going to be talking about and using um, one of the analyst slides as a design, um, as our demo. Uh, first of all, macro is like, how do you lay out your main pieces of the PowerPoint on the slide? Uh, where do you put the title? Where do you put the summary? Where do you put the content? How do you position those elements? And how much space do you give between the elements? And then there's a micro element to it. It's like, more what type of fonts do you use? Um, how much space do you have between the lines? How much space do you have between the paragraphs? Um, I'll show you in a little bit later, but um, from space perspective, when you select text and you go to paragraph, um, a lot of times PowerPoint sets default to single. Um, it kind of bunches everything together. Uh, it's not wrong, but definitely industry standard is to select multiple and then any value between 103 and 1.24 will give you a very nice, very crisp result in terms of space between lines and space between paragraphs, it's usually 50 to 100% of your font size. So if I have a font size of 7, um, a good one would be between 3.5 and 7. So in this case, with 6, make it 5. Still very legible, uh, the fact that there is paragraph space. Now we're going to jump into one of the examples that I have uh, set aside. Um, first of all, I understand what they are trying to accomplish with this slide, but in the same time, it kind of makes it difficult for anybody who is outside of this topic uh, to understand anything about this particular slide, what is important and what is not. So first thing that I'm going to do is make sure that on the top, um, I put my title um, that is actually the number of the mandate and the explanation. Um, and as you can see that I have different guidelines uh, for white screen slide. I have a couple extra on the side because it's a little bit more difficult to work with white screen than it is with uh, 4x3 because it's more common. Um, I'm going to extend this box and make sure that the text um, fits, in, fits into it and um, I'm going to go ahead and apply those um, parameters that we just discussed. Um, first, I'm going to go into paragraph. I'm going to select uh, multiple um, for line spacing. I'm going to set 1.14. And for paragraph spacing, I'm going to set um, 16. Um, and then I'm also going to adjust the size, font size, uh, to 16 because there was actually multiple um, font sizes within that paragraph, which makes it kind of distracting. Um, once I have that settled, I'm going to take this message and we're not reviewing this from content perspective, we're reviewing it from more of a design perspective and in my world this would be more of a either the key message that you're trying to convey or uh, kind of like the main idea that they should take away or something that is really important that they should really pay attention to. Um, so that would go kind of in the middle, um, give it space separated from the rest of the paragraph um, and also make sure that the body of your uh, slide is of the same size for text unless there is something really significant, really important 
Um, and if you're making web slides that will be shared with people through PDF or PowerPoint, um, you don't need to have full links that they will be retyping. Um, just simply go ahead and go into hyperlink and edit it and remove all of the extra shenanigans that people usually don't read and don't need to see. That way um, you can just say for further interpretation, go to website and that way you have more real estate on your page. Um, another important change that I would make to the slide is that um, you do need to have some sort of a lead in at the top of your paragraph, so at the top of your slide. So go ahead and uh, find a way to summarize, um, not, if not the main point of the slide, but at least um, a logical transition from the title to what are we going to talk about, and here is your paragraph. Um, you can group these elements together by pressing Ctrl G so that when you move them around, they stay together. Um, but in very few um, moves, uh, we were able to go from a very messy slide um, to rather a professional looking slide. Um, now we're just going to jump into the last example. Um, this is the slide that was sent to me actually earlier this week. Um, and I did hide some of the information just because it's uh, related to our project. But the idea was that there are certain scenarios that occur um, and there are obvious outcomes that come out out of it. And when the analyst sent it to me, um, I did work with him to fix it up, but I decided to go ahead and just kind of jump to the end solution that we ended up with. Um, the idea is that you want to make sure that things that you have on your slide um, are definitely all aligned, that if there is something that is opposite, don't keep it the same color. Uh, but at the end of the day, make sure that there's a logical transition from left to right, from top to bottom. Um, and as I said before, um, aligning your paragraphs is important. Um, having paragraphs that span all the way, um, some that are aligned to the middle, some that are aligned to the left. Um, it makes it very difficult to understand the slide, um, especially when you're trying to process a lot of information very quickly. So from that perspective, try to make it easy for people, um, because part of it is probably why you're presenting, um, is to convey certain information, and you want to convey it in the, the simplest um, way possible that they can understand and digest it. Um, so that would be the end of the video. I hope you all enjoyed it. I hope you all learned something. Uh, please do leave comments. Um, let us know what we did right, what we did wrong. Um, if you have any suggestions, uh, if you have any tips. Uh, we're also looking to maybe start a weekly series where somebody sends us slides and uh, we help them make better. We probably have to go through some cleansing process and remove some of the private information. But at the end of the day, we probably want to have um, like another series where we can um, work with you and uh, help you make your design better. Um, if you're working for a larger corporation, probably can't really work with your templates and your designs. But if you're somebody who has who has um, your own business or you're working on a side project, send us your slides and we can uh, help you make them better and maybe we can make a video out of it. Um, hope you'll enjoy it and uh, have safe flights everyone.